<laughs> y'all love y'all got a timer. Y'all mad professional. I'm just being honest, man. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Y'all got cooks. Y'all got women. We don't even got no women on our set. No, like, no. We, we need women. Like, it's, it's, y'all going to the hood. That's why I say y'all take shots. We toast. Yeah, y'all, this is a very nice set, man. Let me just point this out, man. I feel very comfortable. I feel like th I'm on ESPN right now. <laughs> I feel like Walt Disney is going to come out and say hi to me at some point. You know what I mean? Like, this is a very nice set, man. I really appreciate this. We had to fight to get a meal, yeah. Wrongfully accused, we had to fight to get a pill. That's why we right to get a deal. He on the team, he gotta eat, you know. Spike, spike your skills, fat. Keep it riding for the fam, you gotta light the wooden wheel straight up. But in the past, bad, work up in the trash bag. I'll pass a lot to take the test before I pass class. Yeah, and my family needed bread, I had to come correct. That's why I keep airing it out like I just passed gas. We got, we got Nori here, week eight. We got the NFL parlay. And actually, I don't know if y'all know, I Am Athlete Parlay is killing it this year. Yeah. Because we talking through it. We talked through it with Dez. We talked through it with Revis. Like, bro, we're killing the I Am Athlete Parlays this year. Rohan. So, yeah, Rohan. So I love it. I love it. DraftKings, we got to give big love to the sponsor. But since Nori's here, I'm going to let him call out the parlay. Don't his, mess it up. His three games that he believes is going to do it. For DraftKings for the I Am Athlete Parlay, and if if he if he up, we are gonna check him. <laughs> Listen, I'm clearly <laughs> up. I'm just letting y'all know off top. Um, this is all from my heart. This is not no no strategic nothing. The first pick I'm going with. You ready? I'm from New York. Right, but I know where you're going, baby. Yeah. I'm going with the Giants. J E T S. No, 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 no. See? No, yeah, see? don't do that. Don't do that. I'm going with the They're Giants. Cincinnati oh. over over Kansas City. At Kansas City? I, I'm from New York. I got to go for it. But I don't give a damn where you from. The jo Daniel Jones over Patrick Mahomes at home? These are I for sure I, bets, though, Nori. Our people made a lot of money you, off of I us. I told you this is, this is from my heart. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, All right, this, so then go look, ahead. Go I, ahead. Don't bet on me, y'all. <laughs> then I'm going with Tampa Bay at New Orleans. That's money. Y'all like that? That's money. I got Miami over Buffalo. I love it. Even though, in part, I think Buffalo's a tougher team. All right, listen, All right, what he's saying off. right now, don't listen to him. He a rapper, yes. he a media yes. mogul. Yes. We not doing that. Go to DraftKings.com, <laughs> yes. use yes. promo code yes. ATHLETE, yes. and here is the Week 8 NFL Parlay from I Am Athlete. We gonna go with Tampa Bay at New Orleans, take Tampa, not New Orleans. Yes. We also gonna go I, with, I went with the, the Rams over Houston. That's what we gonna do. And the last one, Chan, we are gonna go with New England at the Los Angeles Chargers. Chargers is going to win that game. These boys right here, they built different. I'm telling you right now, those three games, that's the I Am Athlete Parlay for week eight. All right? DraftKings.com. Athlete is the promo code. Nori, appreciate you joining the show this week. It's only right that we change this entire show to I Am Athlete Drink Champ. I like that. <laughs> Here we go. I like uh oh, it's one of my favorite drinkers in the world. No, last time yeah, we started that shit, it was over for me. One of my favorite drinkers in the world. But, but so what, what he did was this, and we ain't know this. Like this is legendary. Y'all two wasn't there. You stood up, Nori. We'll get into that. Yeah. You wasn't there, Jo. <laughs> but you would think that. You know, most shows are, you know, we're going to come in, we're going to sit down, do a podcast, do a show, 60 minutes, 90 minutes tops. We was there for five and a half hours, Ocho. That's perfect. And, and what he was doing was every five minutes, he's like, shot, shot, drink, drink, <laughs> right? So, you know what I mean? And, and that's what makes the show legendary, for real. Like, yeah. you know, now you're seeing other people starting to do it. We do it at times just organically, naturally. You're seeing other people on shows do it, but... To me, like, it's almost like the logo. Like, it's, it's amazing. So right now, we're going to take a shot for Nori. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh -oh. Come on, baby. Yeah, yeah. You we, thought we wasn't going to get you back. We don't do it this Come early on. in the show, Come but on. it's OK. Come All right. Salute, salute. Salute. salute to I Am Athlete, bro. Yeah, salute. salute to I Am Athlete. Let me get some. Mm. By the way, going to get y'all some Ciroc in here. Ciroc. 
Yeah, you gotta have a black man's liquor in here. Okay. Can we, can we run around with that? But they ain't call us yet. Well, you can make a call. You know who you are? You know who y'all are? Y'all gotta make a call. Make it, Nori, make the connection, Nori. Yeah, bro, put us in. But this like I'll make the connection. OG, but this like my OG. Every time I see him, we be at ZZ's. I see Sardelli's, him on the beach. Yeah, anywhere, I'm like, bro, yes. teach me the game. Teach me the game. T -t -t teach me how to do this. So, yeah, bro, teach us how to connect. Well, well the podcast game is, is, is something that is very, 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 very unique for people like me who came from uh, rapping and, you know, being, for, what, uh, for lack of a better term, being pimped. Because you're, you're being pimped regardless. Regardless if you, you know, the toughest guy in the world, if you sign to a record label, you work for the record label, no matter what. You know what I'm saying? So podcast is something different. Like, you guys taught me something that when y'all came on our show. I said, the minute you sign, they're looking for somebody to replace you. In podcast, it's not like that. If you develop a fan base, that fan base, and you drop every Monday, that fan base will curse out your mother if you're late. Where's the episode? Yo, and I, I just like that. I just like, I like not having to answer to nobody. I like, um, I like being my own boss. I like being able to come to work when I want to come to work. I like being able to leave work when I want to leave work. And so podcasting has been very, very, very good to me. Can everybody be you? Can everybody have their own time to be on time, to be there for the production, to do all of that? Or do people want to be pimped in your industry? Ooh. That's a great question. Um, so I'm going to take some of my time to answer that one. Yeah. I ain't gonna, um, you well, know, I was watching The Sopranos earlier, and it, it came a time where a guy took over the, the, uh, to be a boss, and he was doing a terrible job. And, and the guy said, well, everyone is not meant to be great number ones. Some people are just meant to be great number twos. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, some that, people. That's uh, yeah. I feel what, what season that is. I killed that. Special voice for that. Special voice for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. So, 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 so to answer your question, some people aren't made to be bosses because if I don't show up to a set, if if it's not you know everything is not done, then the, the job doesn't get done. You know what I'm saying? So everything is blamed on me. So I take that, but you know. I also can't take the win when everything goes right neither. Because if you're supposed to be like the, the Jordan or you know the LeBron or whatever, you're supposed to take your win and say, well, I'm going to practice tomorrow. You can't celebrate. There's, there's, no, there's no spike in the ball. There's, I got to go to work again tomorrow. Well, when, when can you celebrate? Bro, you, you well, I celebrate every day. But I was but, say, you've, been, you've been in the game, bro, yeah. since the 90s? I've been in the game since 1997. So 97. The so. War Report, me and Capone, official first album, The War Report, in 1997. Um, yes, yeah, so I've been in the game since then. So when, like, with ball players, like, there's, there's goals to reach. There's Pro Bowls, there's Super Bowls. There's, like, there's, there's goals in that. Is there goals? My goal was to move to a nicer part of Queens. Like, I didn't even think, Miami wasn't even on my schedule. Like, I never even thought of Jamaica, the island. I thought about Jamaica, Queens. I was like, yo, <laughs> that's my goal right there. If I can move to Jamaica, You're Queens, right. I'm done. Right. Like, I'm done. So, naturally, uh, I had to set different goals. I had hit my goals, and I couldn't believe it, and I had to set different goals. And I, you know, I, I kept uh, achieving it. Not, all, not every year, not all the time. I had rough years, had rough patches. Um, being an artist, you get played out. I don't care who lied to you. I don't give a if they was hot for 20 years. They had three years of roughness, only performing in Europe, acting like they wanted to be there. They ain't want to be in Dusseldorf. No. I got, I, got a, I got a question. Yeah. I'm not a rapper. I don't know much about the business, but you just stated that once you sign the contract, you're being pimp. So yeah. why is it that so many people want to be a rapper and want to have that image and, and be flashy with all the cars if it's really not all that's made up to be? Well, it's what you make it. Like, it's just like life. Life is what you make it, right? So the thing about it is most people look at it like, yo, I'm going to sign my first deal. Like, um, everybody's first deal is their worst deal. Like, I don't know no rapper that was like... How is it their worst deal when everybody looks like they the cream of the motherfucking crop? Well, let me, let me take that back because the new artists have buzzes. When we, we, back in the days, what we had was we make great music, our A&R would come hear it, and then they'll sign it. Nowadays, people have buzzes before they, before they did it, but, but for the most part, when you look at people like, you know, Jay-Z, Nas, Rick Ross, uh, Nori, 
all of our first deals is probably our worst deals we ever made. It's because you just use third person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so um, matter of fact, Ross told us that, didn't he? Right. He did say his, his first deal was his worst. Yeah. Deal. Uh, because because what it is is we always look at it like it's the next play. This play is just to get me in the door. Once I'm in the door, no one ain't gonna kick me out. And we all look at that. But there's people like, excuse me, I, I said Jay Z, but there's people like, like Jay who actually wanted to own his material from the beginning. And to say you wanted to own yourself back then was like kind of like blasphemy. Like I want to own me. Like everyone, everyone, they're all owned by, you know, uh, Universal, by Def Jam, by Island, by Interscope. And then when you say I want to own me. That's like blasphemy. It's like, wow, until nowadays, now, own, having ownership, owning your masters. How difficult is it to own your masters, though? Well, I'm going to tell you like this. I want to big up companies like Def Jam, who is making it very simple. If you come to the Def Jam right now and say, I want to buy back my masters, they're making great deals. They're really, they're really working with the artists. I want Who's to at big that table making that deal? Um, well, it's, it's actually just Def Jam, the, cor the corporation. I think that they're... They've been the forefront of hip hop, you know, and they want to be the forefront of, you know, people have, get, gaining back their ownership. Because really, when you hear an artist's music played in a movie, right? Let's suppose my music is played in a movie and I didn't know it. That's because I don't own it. Because they have to negotiate with you if you own a material. Do you own Super Thug? I, no, I don't own Super Thug. That's why I bring that up. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> so I heard it. it. Yeah. <laughs> what, what movie did I hear it in? It's Entourage. It's the exact movie I was thinking of. I don't know how you got in my head. I don't know how you knew what exact moment I was talking about right now. And when I saw Entourage, I'm sitting there, saw Entourage, and obviously Pharrell owns his 50% of that record. I got Steve Levinson's number. Okay, no, I'm good. I got not, paid. You were, you were talking about not being on Ballers. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about not getting, I mean. Yeah, put it like this. I got paid later in life, but I didn't get paid as an owner, which right now I'm getting paid as. So if I get paid as an artist right now, and I'm used to getting paid as an owner, I'm looking like, what a dickhead I was right. at 18, at 21. Like, I could have, I, I, I was the hottest rapper in the world. I could have held out, but I wanted a million dollars. I don't want to steal your thunder and keep clapping, but you really just said you was the hottest. Rapper. I was. I ain't going to keep clapping. In 1998, they, they like, were, what was it? Yeah, me, yeah. DMX, Big Pun, Cameron. Um, and you was the hottest? I was the hottest at the time right. I signed. At the time Tell I him, signed. Talk to him. At the time I signed, I was the hottest. Right, right, talk right. To and right, I sold, right. uh, other than DMX, I sold the most on my first week. DMX did 220. I did 163 plus of the 18,000 that they pre-sold from me. From me because... They bootlegged it and they still counted it. Well, Make some noise for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got one more question. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm bad. I got one more question. No, 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 you have so more questions. Def Jam mm -hmm. is willing to work with the artists yes. and allowing them to buy back their masters. Yes. So if the artist owns their masters, then how does Def Jam make any money? Well, well, they're going to make money off of it regardless because they still have to buy the product from Def Jam. So with Def Jam, it's, it's like a, a, a trust me system. So what Def Jam says is let them buy it back, but let me still sell it for you. But you can go in the archives and you can go look and see which sells. You might, you might, you might be selling just 500 units uh, a week or a month, but they're gonna let you, they're gonna open up those books because you are now their partner. And that's the first label or the only label right now because that's how Two Chains bought his, right, right, his, right. his, his catalog right. back. He actually went to them as a platinum artist. He's not buying back a gold record. He's buying back a platinum these platinum records, and that is just amazing. So I think I'm just asking these questions. Please. I'm getting ready to start. Please. I've been mean, I mean wanting to ask, yeah. me ask these questions. No, he, he's about to say I'm finna like integrate. He act like he can rap. I can rap. I saw you fight, man. I saw you fight. Yeah, probably I can fight too. Yeah. But listen, you like what you saw? I did, man. I wrote it for him. I did. did. You, I did. You wrote it for him. I got nervous when he, fell, when he fell down. I got nervous. Fell down. I got nervous, yeah. He yeah. fell down, Chad. He didn't trip, Norman. He, I thought he tripped. Because he going to tell you. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> hey, you see how they hate they see how they they hate, hate. They hate. No, 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 you, uh, listen, no, you got the sweet side. I'm thinking about rapping. Rapping. Okay. I'm transitioning, and I don't know what to do. So I'm in a midlife crisis, so I'm going to rap. And I'm thinking about signing with Def Jam, and I know I can sell about two, 300000 a week. Give him some bars. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So he can he can he can guide you, he can navigate you. Cause he he it's a difference, right? Like if you if right. you are who you are. Right, right. He'd be like, all right, this is what you need right, to do. Right you might you need to go independent. Right, right. But if you ain't who you need who you are, 
then you might need a machine behind you. So give him a couple bars, bro. My beat what? I'm asking. We're good. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. They call me Bad Chad. I'm really fucking glad. We got Nori on the show, and he been... That's Keep it. going. Pick it up. It. That's that's it. It. Sign that man. Hey. That's it. Sign hey. that man. Hey. Hey. hey, pick it up. Hey, hey, because you ain't seen them. You seen Jay Z and them running around like, doing all this like other and then they pick it up. Come on, yeah. we good. We good. Uh. Uh-huh. That shit. Um. <laughs> Don't call me. Bitch. <laughs> I jumped in the ring and went down like a fling. Woo. But I'm back again. I'm gonna dance like a hen. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. We yeah. good. All right. Now, no, what you no, think? No. Now, what you uh, think? We independent or we need a machine? It's independent for sure. See? Yeah. See? <laughs> tell you something. Tell you. You want to own your material. That's why. You want to own your material. Dance like a hen. Huh? Dance like a hen. You ain't never seen a hen dance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can push 300, 300,000 units because I got the fan base already. Get right. the buzz. That's real. That's real. I got the buzz. That's real. Boom. I get the machine behind me. It's whatever. <laughs> That's weird. Let me let me go back um, to what you was talking about because one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the show is not to really talk about music, but to mm. talk about media. But right, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like you are one of the first. But before we even get there, where are they at now? Cannabis, John Forte. Mm. Yeah, we looking for the too. What do you mean? Does anybody who's a legend who has ten years or more? We want to give you your flowers. He wants you. So we, I think we tried to book cannabis one time. He has a different story. He, he said on Twitter that we, we didn't send him a car service. Brother, this is 2021. No one uses car service. We got what's called Uber. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know where he got that story from, but um, John Forte, I haven't seen him since he came home from jail. But I would love to give him his flowers. That's what Drink Champs is about. We didn't make up, you know, Give them the flowers while you can smell them. We didn't make that up, but we made it popular. What we noticed is that in our in our genre and our music, if you have ten years or more, people say that you washed up. People say that it's over for you. And I looked at other genres of music like you know jazz and rock and roll. They don't even have a word like washed up. It's only us. It's only us that put a timeline on us. Uh, yeah, hip hop. So um, I wanted to change that narrative. I wanted to be like, you know what, Rakim is a hero. Big Daddy Kane is a hero. You know, KRS One is a hero. Where's they? Where's they platforms? I mean, course of drink champs. You got other, you know, you got Rock the Bells who will tell you straight up and down they was inspired by drink champs because of us giving flowers to our peers. And it's not only like you know people who have bigger success than me. I interview people who have nowhere near as much success as me, and I give them the, their flowers as if they're bigger than Jay Z. And that's why because because it's hard. Let me just tell you something. It's hard to be halfway famous, let alone full-blown famous, let alone small famous. Like, if you half famous or full-fledged famous or small famous, you can't take your, your there's no taking your costume off, ever. You wear this costume, you can have a bad day, stay in the house. Well, I think that's also what happens with athletes a lot of times, depending on the position. That's what I'm saying. Right? Yeah. What happens, you know, depending on the position, not even just from fame, mm-hmm. but when you walk in with a six foot five frame yep. at 300 pounds, yep. right? My dad went through this, and I think it's a part of mm-hmm. some of his some of his depression, right? Mm-hmm. Which is God he bless. can't get away from being asked, do you, do you play pro ball? What do you what do you do? Yeah. Right? So you can't get away from it. Some positions you can't get away from it. So if you have this kind of relationship with it, this strained relationship with the game, no matter where you go, the grocery store, yep. you go to, to, to your son's game, you go anywhere, it's like, you play ball, you play ball. And then especially for a guy like my dad, who's 6'5", 350 right. pounds, who doesn't play ball, Wow. right? It's just wow. like, he feels as if he's not doing, and I don't wanna speak for him, but I think that's how I always saw it, is like, he always had to say, nah, nah, I just, I'm just, just a guy, I'm right. just a guy. But I think that's also what ends up happening to football players. After when they're done, you have to say, no, I'm well, done. I don't play anymore. All right, talking about done in transitions, a couple of us, right, we can transition into nonprofit because we feel like, all right, well, Deion Sanders and Ray Lewis, they did this, so I got to do that, right? And then you look at it, nonprofit work, so we got to have something that we can work off of. And then you also see these dudes sitting in these seats on ESPN, NFL Network, FS1, oh, I can potentially do that, right? So my question for you is, 
and it's going to get me to a, a phenomenal conversation. But I feel like when it's all said and done, when you see Noriega, okay, you're going to go down as a media mogul and a legend there and legendary there more so, you know, on, over just the artist and the rapper and the hip hop, like for sure. So my question on the transition thing is, how do you retire as a hip hop artist and as an artist? Well, I've been retired. I told my because I was tired of this game and nobody paid attention to me because I said it before. And I, I just, I retired from the bullshit. I just, I don't have no boss. I don't have nobody to tell me to go. And that's what I retired from. I hear what you're saying, mm -hmm. but that's up here. No, no, when I'm talking about when that. I retire, when I okay. retire, they force us out. No, 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 yeah. no, no. I'm talking about. Did you get a pension? Did y'all have a 401k? Ain't no pension in hip hop. Did you have, do you have, have a, do you, you have a 401k? You want in? me to explain to you what hip hop is? That's what I'm trying to get to. All right, let me explain to. to you what hip hop is. The worst loan you can ever make. When you sign to a major label, you that money that they give you. Let's let's say they give you 800 grand, right? That's a loan. You have to pay back that loan with interest. So if you don't make back that 800 grand, what they do is they put you in the red, but you can still be hot and you didn't make back that 800 grand. So you can still be hot, so they'll give you another album. And they'll give you, an, instead of 800 grand, they'll give you 1.2 this time, right? So now, but you're in the, still in the hole for that 800. You understand? But you, now you got another 1.2. And if you don't make that, then you're just in the red for both, both, and this is a loan with interest that you don't get nothing out of. Hip hop is not meant for the artist to win. Mm. It's, wow. it's never been meant for the artist to win. And the more and more you learn, the more and more you read your contracts, the more and more it's disturbing. And that's why labels like QC is winning because they own it and they're trying to put their artists onto game. That's what, a, that's what a real, like when you hear that Jay-Z gave Rihanna back her masters, that's a real move because that's saying, I don't only want my own shit back, but I want something, I want other people to have it back as well. Basic artist contract, it was made for the artist to be It was not made for the artist. It was made for the artist to always have to need the record label because let's suppose you, you juried out, you got that 800, remember I said 800 for the first album? You got that 800, you spent 400 immediately, and then you spent 400 on jury, and then you got all your show right, money, right, right. You, 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 you went and got a house, and you went and got moms. cars, and you got, went and got moms, but now you gotta live up to that. Now you are $800,000 dude a year. You gotta have that. So now you go 1.2. Most people would dumb it down, but they wanna wear Gucci. Right. They wanna wear Louie. Right, right. They wanna have a, you know. Right. So what are you getting in that deal then, right? Hold, hold, hold. If, if, you're, ahead, if, you're, if you're given 800 and then 1.2, is it just the platform? Are you put in the red just for the platform, just for, for all of those things? See, I can't generalize it. Or do you retain anything? Because there's different, there's different things. Like, like if it was Bobby Smurda, Bobby Smurda had the biggest buzz in, in the world. But now if it's Smurda Bobby, who we've never heard of, you know, he, that 800 might do him very well. That 800 might really get his family out of Liberty City, might really get his family out of 40 projects. You know what I'm saying? If an artist has never transitioned to signing himself, then that artist has been pimped his whole life. Because for my second album, I signed myself. I, I figured my first album, I got jerked. Right. So I made up a, a record label, didn't tell the label that I owned it, continued to do business with them, but I told them, you got to do business with this label. So they signed on to do business with the label, be partners with the label, and they didn't know that I was the owner of the label. Make some noise for me, goddamn. Yeah. Take I a call shot. on quick. Shot, shot. Ah, uh, did that? Yeah, shot. yeah, yeah. Another shot. You think we're gonna get you back? Uh, now, I my boy Chan. I'm you had Channing on the show. <laughs> no, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just drink some wine. First, oh, I'll do some wine. I'll do some wine. First off, oh, first off, oh, first off oh, oh, let me just be clear. Nah, Y'all can't keep blaming me for Channing. No, Channing. Y'all can't keep blaming me for Channing. Listen, Channing got himself drunk. He was the only. No, you warned me though. Come on, come on. Because I'm in the. Y'all are very smart. So. Yo, know, Tom, you you trying to you trying to find a pair? Of, I am athlete. You trying to find a pair between the rap game and and the professional athlete. Mm -hmm. They tell us when we re when we have to retire, like your body cannot do this anymore. We don't mm -hmm. trust that you can do what you did. What retires a rapper? Like I'm an Atlanta dude, yeah. well, Pastor Troy, Little yeah. John, like dudes that I was in love with. First off, you know what I'm saying. What retires a rapper? First off, the fans. Mm. If your fans grow with you and they stick with you, I say rap for the rest of your life. 
But if you do something else and your fans with that as well, then you're multitasking. You you can do you can do other. Shit. You understand what I'm saying? Like when I went into movies, when I went and started Spanish music. Excuse me, let me just rephrase that. <laughs> started Spanish. <laughs> like, you ain't start Spanish music, Nori. Reggae don't been around, but I literally fell in love with the music. I, I half Puerto Rican. I went to Puerto Rico, and there's nothing more sexy or beautiful than to see a beautiful woman dancing the reggaeton. And I came home, and I said, I'm going to do this. I, I, I did it. No one. They would laugh at me. They're like, oh, I would have laughed at you. He's too. doing a record with someone called Tego Cotteron, <laughs> and the other guy named is Daddy Yankee. Now Daddy Yankee's one of the most popular people on the planet. But when you're the first, you're either the smartest, the dumbest, or you're the one that's going to be laughed at. So I, I took it and I, they, now this is, this is another thing. I didn't have, I didn't have digital on my contract. So when I'm making Oye Mikando, which is Boricua, Morena, Dominicano, Colombiano, you know, when I made that, there wasn't nothing even digital. So when I, when I, when I brung it to Def Jam, because I was on Def Jam, and I brung it to Def Jam, and I said, I want to throw this record out. They laughed at me. The, the owners of Def Jam was like, you going to throw out a Spanish record? All right, go ahead. Go on your own. I'm a gold artist at the time. They don't let gold artists go on their own. That's like me saying, yo, I'm going to play for the, 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 the pro. I'm going to play for Rucker, Rucker right, right. football. Right, right, like, right. what? Like, they're like, you're not doing that. But they didn't believe in me. I threw the record out. It did 500 spins. Next week. 1,500 spins. Next week, 600 spins. Uh, 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 6,000 spins. Next week, uh, 10,000 spins. By that time, they, they called me back and said, bring me my record. I said, your record? You just told me I could go out there and do it independent. And I broke the mold. Did I, if I would have knew that, you think I could have made the deal right there. I want to own this master. Mm. But they offered me a bunch of money. I'm thinking, I'm not a Spanish artist. So I just took the money. But now, if I would have just went back and said, I don't want no money. I just want to own this master. Have you had that conversation with Def Jam? people that are not just Def Jam, artists in the game today? I'm having it right now. Do you get a lot they of industry pushback for that? Nah, nah, everyone no. wants to own their master now. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, are there anybody who's, who's in suits? Giving you pushback for the way that you're educating people. Now I'm gonna tell you, no, no, I'm gonna tell you when I when I felt like Illuminati was gonna come get me. Here we go. <laughs> At one point in Drink Chance, we was doing stupid numbers. It was just dumb. Like we was the only, cause we was the only podcast on the, at the time. We was just any anybody we interviewed. It was just it was just dumb. So I said, you know what? If we're doing six million on this episode. And SoundCloud has to pay me a penny every time my record is being played. So I said, hmm, let me jerk the masses. <laughs> let me try. So for four to six episodes, I played my record, a record I fully owned. It wasn't even out. I think it was called Petty. And I was like, you, Petty. So digitally, Petty had almost 64 million in audience. But if you didn't listen to the podcast because we didn't have it on YouTube because I didn't know I didn't know the rules of YouTube but I knew the rules of SoundCloud I knew the rules of the digital format and when I kept, stepped to the boys and I said well if my if if this month we did 48 million in spins and I played my record all those times what do y'all owe me and that was a different type of phone call. <laughs> mm. That was when I knew that I cracked something that they didn't. Like, they were like, wait a minute. Like, they called my lawyer back. They didn't even call me back direct. They called my lawyer back, like, tell him to calm down. And I knew I, I, I went somewhere. And when I figured that out, because just think about it, that's not fake spins. That's real views. Now, are they listening to my record when they want? I don't know that part. But neither do they. There's no way they could take the algorithms and say, well, people fast forwarded that part. Can't they? I don't think so. 
So, they go, so. Yo, listen, they're going to come for me. If Illuminati, Illuminati come for me, man. <laughs> <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up. Oh, no, no, hell no. Come on, no, yeah, no, Shane, you don't do it. I'm done. You last yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah, you yeah. Drink your wine. Listen, but hold on, hold on. He's my favorite type of jigger. Uh -huh. The reason why I wanted you on this show is because I wanted to give you your flowers. Okay, that's right? hard. And, and, and no, I get flowers. Like, I'm, I'm leaning into you. Like, mm, this is real. That's all. And you know, we, we sentimental on this show. Ocho mm. didn't cry on this show. Yeah. Tanning didn't tear it up. Fred T, we ain't got him to cry yet. I didn't cry. J.O. ain't never going to cry. Right? But earlier you talked about mm -hmm. there's the ones and the twos. Right. And when I came on your show and I saw you in your operation and then I sat down with you at different restaurants and mm -hmm. I started picking your brain, I said, oh my goodness, this dude's a genius. Mm, thank you. Right? I said that about you, but thank right. you. And I said, you know, this dude, this ain't no musician anymore. Mm -hmm. This dude's an artist. So mm -hmm. I truly believe you are, you set, you, you created a blueprint mm -hmm. for artists to gracefully transition into. And be their own bosses. Do you feel like you have laid the blueprint for these artists, cannabis, you know, you got John Forte and so many others. Even Fat Joe right now, like Fat yeah. Joe. Fat Joe's my little media man. He's, it's just insane what he's doing. He's my big homie and everything else, but media, he, media, he my little homie. Right. right but go ahead. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm <laughs> with you. With you. We want Fat Joe on the show. Yeah, yeah, go yeah go get him. Go come get him. And respond to that. But, um, yeah. but, but do you feel like you have set the blueprint for artists? to gracefully transition into something else. Because like you said, hip hop is the only genre where our hip hop artists, there ain't no gracefully growing and elevating and reinventing yourself. But, and that, and to me, I'm gonna be honest, to mm, me, mm. you created that. Um, I, I would like to take that, but um, I don't feel like these, these, these people are listening because first off, I told people from the beginning, that podcast is a three check thing. So many people, they'll sign to a company. And when you're signing a podcast, you're only signing your audio. Let's be clear, a podcast really just means audio. Your video is a separate deal. And I tell people that. I said, yo, why are you giving your, your, your YouTube away for free? So these people were signed to a Spotify, right? Spotify can't technically control your YouTube anyway. That's their direct competition. But what they would do is they'll let Spotify put it on YouTube under another name. And Spotify monetizes that. So Spotify is, is different because remember how I told you with Def Jam, Def Jam becomes your partner. You can look at the books. Spotify can tell you this is what you, you did and that's that. That's not boss to me. To me, you're like, you're still being pimped. You're working for free. Like, I got jerked in hip hop not to get jerked in the podcast world. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't got no love. Like, I'm here as a Russian racehorse with my eyes this way. And if we have a great relationship, cool. But if not, I'm here to make the money and get out of here. I'm sorry. No, yeah. it's, it's all good. Mm -hmm. It adds to the question what I'm asking is, mm -hmm. do you think you have to relinquish and give up your identity as an artist in order to be a boss. Can those two things actually coincide and you yeah. be a good boss? Nah, yeah, Jay-Z is the perfect, uh, perfect he signed himself. Like, so then why'd you retire? So then why'd you retire well, and give up the artistry to specifically think about being a boss? Well, I like the major labels. Like, I like, I like I, I'm, I'm the guy that likes Def Jam. I'm the guy that likes Interscope. I'm the guy that, and if I can maintain what I know now and still do business with the majors, I would. You know what I'm saying? But the reason why I'm saying I'm not making music is because I don't do nothing if less is 100%. Like, I, I don't jerk off unless it's 100%. Like, I gotta be into it. Lotion, gotta be all that. You know what I'm saying? It gotta be all that. Like, I don't do nothing. I ain't like, I, no I gotta give off 100. <laughs> I'm talking about if I eat in a crab leg, I'm in. I got the bib on, obey, mustard sauce. I do everything 100%. And I don't 100% love being in the studio right now. I don't 100% love being on stage right now. And my fans have been so much 100 to me, I'll be corny for me to give them 45% well, of me. Well, you know how, what I'm saying? How did you get this big? Like, we know you as a rapper and now yeah. you're an entrepreneur. Like, but right. yeah, it's a media, this, media um, mogul. Media mm -hmm. mogul. Mm -hmm. But how, how, why did that love leave? Like, the reason we know you is because when I was a kid, 
I used to listen to Nori. Right. Like, when did that, when did that it, love it was, it was this one show. It was this one show. We was in the Hamptons. Got pretty, 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 pretty bag, right? You know, for like three songs. How much? It was like 75, right? For Something three like songs. For three songs. So we talking about right. like 16 minutes, 17 minutes? I might have gave him 15. I might have gave him a little more. But it wasn't that. It was the promoter. It was the owner of the club. And he was like, well, come on. It's time. And I felt rented. I was rented. They rented me for the night. <laughs> it is. Just think about it. When you're going to do a show, you're rented. You're a rent a rapper. <laughs> I love when you get this. <laughs> what, where am I saying wrong? <laughs> like you rented a rapper. They paying you for that 15 minutes. Give me 75 minutes. It, it wasn't that. Right, it, right. Right. Was, it wasn't that. It was. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Nah, in the Sopranos, in the Sopranos, uh, uh, Carmela does the same thing. Oh, she goes like this. Oh, uh, there, there. You know your shit. She goes like that. I just saw that. She goes like that. And her friend was, was eight. But this is not my friend. Mm -hmm. This is somebody I just met. No relationship. No relationship. He, I mean, we, he was, I was a hired help, but it wasn't what it wasn't what he said. It was how he said it. And um, but that was, it was a, it changed me at that moment because I had no argument, and I was like, man, you know what? I just came too far for this. That's I don't like want to go get your shine box moment. That's that's what it is. Yeah. That's that's yeah. Go shine shoes. Yeah. Like yeah. that's what it that's what it felt like to me. And I was just like, you know what? I need to find a way where I don't have to. And don't get me twisted. I went and had a show in Connecticut the other day with Little Kim, The Locks, Cameron. You performed? Yeah, I performed. This is my first time in, during the whole pandemic. And I did, I did miss it. I did miss it. I did miss certain parts of it. I missed when I can, you know, have a show with all black people and I could go into my reggae throne bag and I could be like, y'all know about Don Omar? And people like, ah. And I can do a Don Omar record. I can play a Gasolina, a Daddy Yankee record. I can play Oyemi Kondo. And it's like, all my black brothers are sitting back there like, you cheating. Like, you, you, you speaking Spanish and shit. Right? Right. You know, like, like, and because like, why, why not? Reggaeton is the most you know, popular genre of music that it is right now. And I was the first person to have a reggaeton record play on Hot 97. I was the first person to have a reggaeton record play on MTV. I was the first person to have a reggaeton record in rotation on BET. You can Google all this. What year was that? You know, you know what year that was? I don't know, man. It was a good year, though. So, 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 let me get some wine. I'm gonna some wine. It was a good year. Like, yeah, it was a good year. See, that's the Iron Man thing. Y'all do all that shy and tweet. We gonna toast, let's toast. Like I, I really like. I mean, we could talk about the music industry for talk days. About what you want to talk we about. could talk about, you know, rap beef. We wow. can talk about all your hits and all that. It makes me think about what uh, Styles P said to us. Okay. Because I asked him about the list. Remember? Mm -hmm. I was like, in, in, in hip hop, everybody's tough. Mm -hmm. Everybody's tough. Everybody's a G. Everybody talk mm -hmm. on their records. Mm -hmm. And I was like, is there two lists of guys that you don't you fuck with and guys that you're not gonna fuck with? And Styles P was like, the guys you don't mess with, there's no list. It's a couple tabs. He was like, there's a list of dudes you know that ain't gonna do nothing if you cut their ass out. He was like, there's a couple guys in the game that I know that if I come at them wrong. It's up. I, I, it's, it's on. It's up. It's on. I agree with Styles. You got you got two lists or is there a list? I don't got no list. I don't got no list. He nice guy. That's his No, I'm a good guy, but no, but nobody with me but so I, that let you know. What you mean? Everybody on your show, what you talking no, about? No, it's about beef with me. Like no, I don't Why got they no don't beef. beef with you? Because I'm a great guy. I just, I just want to smoke weed, drink some wine, and f talk sh And so most of the time, if I ever had a problem, it's really been them. I'm black in Puerto Rican, man. I had an aunt that celebrated her cat's birthday. She used to drink so much. She's like, yo, it's, she's like, come over, it's Ronaldo's birthday. We used to go, oh, sh all right, all right, Titi. <laughs> well, well, who the f is Ronaldo? The cat. It's like, oh, shit. Like, all right, that's how I grew up. Like, I grew up like, I'm, like having fun. Like, so if you take me out of that element, I promise you it's you. What happened with S-O-R-E? Oh. S-O-R-E? Oh, what happened with that? Because it's, it's, well, it's a long lost album, right? Well, it actually did get bootlegged. Um, I, I got my last album. I forgot what it's called. It's not S-O-R-E. Um, oh, it's the Yande. That's going to be my last album. I, um, and I got some records. Me and Nas is, is, is going to go in. Uh, me and Pharrell has been told. Because that's what I'm... 
I'm gonna end it. If I'm gonna end it, I'm gonna end it with all my friends. I'm gonna end it how I started. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And my, oh yeah, I'm gonna have Ocho on there. You know what I'm saying? For real, for real, for real. Let's for real. go. All right, Chef, come on now. Let me, because okay. we always feed our guests and then mm. I want to transition to something. But, Chef, come on now. Okay. Oh, I'm in. Y'all got car bones out here. Okay. Come sit right here, Chef. I'll let me. <clears throat> and you've been, you watch the show. We always have chefs on the mm -hmm. show. Chef Nancy. Nancy um, from Queens, right? She was on Queens. Yes, yeah, right. Chef Nancy Collection. Dot com. Chef Nancy, go to her IG page and then go to her website. Get those products. She's from Jamaica, Queens. Chef, you good? Yeah. No, you ain't good. I'm good. That's safe space, right? O.C. King Grit. Grandma passed today. You know what I'm saying? You here serving us, bro. I appreciate you. Sorry to hear that, man. God bless. You all right? Yeah. I'm hanging in there, man. So talk to me, you know, the reason why I wanted to bring her up because you amazing, bro. Like your food, you cook for my family here and there and you know, you, you, you cook for us. And uh, I walked up on you, you was down, like your energy was different. I was like, bro, what's wrong? This is before the show, I'm like, what's wrong, what's wrong? He's like, man, my grandma passed. You know, I felt that. And you know, I, I wanna take this moment to really celebrate, you know, grandma O.C. Because you said she was the first chef in our family. And now you're taking it to a whole nother level. So how are we going to celebrate Grandma O.C. today? Take a shot. Take a shot. Oh, ah, <laughs> I'm into it. Ah, I'm into it. Oh, we need a shot. I'm into it. But the thing I love about you, when you said she was the first chef in my family, and to, she passed. Transition at 89, 89, 90. 89. 89, right? You said she was the first chef, mm -hmm. right? Now, I love what you're doing and how you, you know, like your vision of pushing this whole industry forward. You know, you're like, yo, I just feel like the, the chef, we got to kind of like unpack the chef. So that's why I appreciate you, bro. You know what I mean? Because you that one, you know what I'm saying? Yes, We're going to take that so shot. Much. I'm glad you ain't say that. <laughs> I'm trying not to stop. I'm trying to stop OC. saying that word. Salud. 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 How do you look like the highest? I mean, you look like you smoked a pound. Nah. <laughs> I'm, high, I'm high on life. You high on life? High on life. I ain't never had no alcohol. I ain't really? never had no weed. I mean, cocaine. I do that a little every blue moon. <laughs> but that's it. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> I was not. Don't edit that. Out. <laughs> don't, don't, edit, don't edit it out. He say this every show. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. I don't do shit. I just smoke cigars. That's so my advice. So why you saying cocaine then? What's wrong with coke? Because you don't do it. Anybody here do coke? Raise your hand. This is Miami. Half of the room is raised right? their hand. On out. the low. Half of the I'm room is like this. this. Their Come ears is like this. <laughs> yeah, this is Miami. If he cut this out, I'm not coming back no more. You need to stop this. <laughs> I'm not editing that out. I might not edit it. I promise. If you if you edit that, I'm not showing up no more. I promise you. Famous <laughs> story. Listen, I'm most famous. <laughs> and one of those partners uh, is cocaine. Cool. They done cocaine too. <laughs> cocaine got plenty of partners. <laughs> this show's over. <laughs> no. No, this hey. show's over. Hey! Hey! Nari. See, Nori, I gotta run a business. Hey. I gotta run a business. Uh, uh first. We do gifting on all of our shows. We had some some legends here, and you're a legend. Manscaping, then, what you're trying to tell me? You tell me what we trying to tell <laughs> you. You're trying to tell you me. You tell me what we trying yeah, to tell you. Yeah, I got I to straighten up. This is the performance package okay. 4.0. We got the uh, the weed whacker. That's for the yalla yalla. No, that's the, that's, no. That's the, that's the lawnmower oh. 4.0. So what's that? Lo for? Lawnmower 4.0 is down there. Underarms? The weed whacker 2.0 oh. do the air. Oh, the air, okay. And then even the nose. Let me show okay. you. Right, Let me show cool. you how this works. But you ain't gonna get that to me after you use it, right? Yeah, I'm gonna get this to you. Don't give it to Just me after you use it. it so this is the Manscaped weed whacker 2.0. So watch this. You see all these men here? Man, right? you got your ass all in the face, <laughs> man. Oh, man. You love the way them yeah. tight ass pants, too, though. Yeah. Every time. Yeah, Rick James. Got it. He got bros on. Got it. Get that right there. We're going to gift you this. Rick yeah. James. Nori ain't going to take that. Right? <laughs> yeah. Manscaped.com. Manscaping. I respect right. Promo code athlete.
Talk to the man about hygiene. Talk to me what, when it comes to hygiene. What does that mean to you? Wash your balls. Wash your ass. Noriega. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had to fight to get a meal, yeah. Wrongfully accused, we had to fight to get a pill. That's why we right to get a deal. He on the team, he gotta eat, you know. Despite, despite the skills, fat. keep it riding for the fam. You gotta light the wooden wheel straight up. I seen the clip the other day where you tried to blindside Ray Lewis. I, I be f***ing his ass up. <laughs> nah, you didn't win that one. I, you didn't win that one. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. I did, did he make the tackle? He didn't make the tackle. I won! <laughs> <laughs> Found out what the blueprint was and then we made it pop. pop. Yeah, and I just keep coming with verses. <laughs> got the boy collecting bags. I'm like a woman Child with purses. Make it to the time. But you gotta leave Chaz's oh, cocaine story. You gotta leave Why? Chaz. I'm, pick, I'm picking in. I'm gonna be outside. Boy, but he don't do it though. Here's Chad Johnson, <laughs> aka Ocho Cinco, aka Influencer, aka. Gamer, aka Dope Boy, aka <laughs> Scammer, aka Scammer, <laughs> oh. Coca Lena, how whatever y'all say, Coca Cola, that's the Coca. Poppin' make it worse though, so I pull out the wheel on her. I play like I'm blind all the time. I go wheel on her, turn the gutter probably why my music put the chill on her.